What happens if Lolita uses magic power build? Hey guys, what's up? Today we're putting Lolita shield to the test with a magic power build. As you know, Lolita shield can now increase with magic power. So if you use this build, she's going to have this amount of shield. That's a whopping 5,000 points of shield. And over here, her allies can gain more than 2,000 shield. And it can even go higher if her teammates are using the item Oracle. Imagine if you have a Hanabi teammate. She can gain an immense amount of shield, all the while giving her CC immunity. Esmeralda is also a good teammate for Lolita. That's like healing her every 5 seconds. However, there are downsides to this strategy. This build sacrifices defense for shield power. Once the shield pops, Lolita becomes squishy. But if you want to have good win rates, I think partnering up with Tank Jungler is the better choice. You'll play Lolita as a support instead of a frontliner tank. You give them shield while they tank the front damage. Remember, you can heal your teammates if you use the favor roaming boots. Tank junglers like Fredrin, Barrett, and Akai will definitely love her shield passive. And besides, Lolita is also bad at initiating team fights. Her ultimate has a long animation and enemies will run away at the sight of the skill. Because of this, she needs someone to distract the enemy while she casts her ultimate at the back. However, just like any heroes, there will be a counter strategy to this build. Life being items will give her a hard time spreading shield. But one thing to remember is the adjustment on dominant size. If you don't hit the wearer of the item, life bane will not take effect. So avoid hitting those tanks if you want to gain full shield. Bloodwings is included in the build because of its magic power and shield passive. This is quite good because you gain a burst movement speed once the shield is depleted. It allows you to reposition and wait for the next wave of passive shield. But if you want to add a bit of spice damage to the build, you can replace Immortality with Starium Sight. With that amount of magic power, she can deal around 600 plus of true damage. However, as expected from rumors, gold is hard to come by. Building that holy crystal will take some time, and that's why it stays in the 5th slot. If we put the build aside, we can see Lolita's win rate has improved in Mythical Glory rank. Before the update, she was at number 58. But now, she has the second highest win rate in Mythical Glory. So there's got to be something special on Lolita even if you don't use a full magic build, right? I think Lolita is a good pick, but not all the time. She's fine if you have enemies with projectile skills that you can reflect. Examples are chang -A, Granger, and Kimi. Moskov, which is a popular pick, can be fun to counter with her second skill shield. But without those projectile skills, her second skill becomes useless. Anyway, we tested for several games and the results were decent. The early game can be rough without a traditional tank build. But the shield starts to ramp up when you have Holy Crystal. However, that's on the late game already. There are times when I wish I was using a normal tank build, but I guess that's the downside of this strategy. Your team starts strong with a full shield, but once it's gone, you become squishy. And Hanabi players will definitely love your passive. So what do you think about this magic power Lolita build? Can it work on rank games? Share your thoughts in the comment section. That's all for this video. Stay safe and thank you for watching.